Mystic Michaela Spiritual Family. Welcome to Know Your Aura with Mystic Michaela. Today, are you in a toxic friend group? Are you about to sneeze and ruin my intro to the podcast? Yes. <laughs> okay. But, but I mentioned it, so you're not I going held to. It in. I held it. I, I took a sip of water so I wouldn't sneeze. <laughs> you should have, everybody, if this was filmed, the face I just had to look at <laughs> During that intro, like the pained about to sneeze face, like <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's why I've been we've been so hesitant to go to video. I know we're trying to do a little more with video. <laughs> I held it in. I held it in for the audience. <laughs> you did. Most of our audience has the uh, mes- misophonia. They have the misophonia. I'm I saving just watching them. you do that. <laughs> Anyways, Stop. no. It's, Stop it. Stop. Do you have to sneeze? Are you good? No, I'm good. I, I held it in because usually I do a double sneeze. Yes. So, no, you are a double sneezer. I'm a double sneezer. And you don't cover. Yeah, I, I've been working on that. <laughs> but I would, you know, this is perfect because, you know, maybe this is some toxic things going on here. But maybe. Uh, yeah. All right. Go do your intro and then we'll, we'll get back. Are you okay. in a toxic friend group? Why do toxic friend groups feel good? Why are you good at it? What does your empath aura have to do with it? And, and what's on the other side of that valley when you can cross it? But first, hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so interesting topic here. I mean, for me, this is pretty much irrelevant because I don't have too many friends. Oh. And um, so I don't know what I'm going to do here. Poor for this Scott. Life. All your discussion groups feel so sad right now. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, well. You said we we're going to take a quiz. We are. So let's get to the quiz. All okay. Right. I'm off to a rock. I'm off to a shaky start. Oh, here. you're good. You're sneezing. Good. It's it's throwing it's me off. It's fine. I'm, it's fine. I'm out of my. Uh, so I found this quiz rhythm. on marriage.com. <laughs> oh. Okay. It just, keeps going. <laughs> we did have Jupiter Donuts before we filmed. We are on a take. sugar rush yeah. right now. Okay. Do, the quiz is it's ten questions and it's am I the toxic one in the relationship? Okay, so we're doing. So we have to be honest, us. like yeah, like we have to answer like really for ourselves. And I just sent it to you on your text, so you're opening it up. Okay. And so press so, start quiz. And I'm gonna answer what I think about yourself, about myself. Okay. Yeah. But I'm thinking of you in this. Yeah, like think about you in the marriage, and I'll think about me in the marriage. Okay. All right. So okay. the first one is. How often do you begin arguments with your partner? Very often, often, rarely, or never. Okay, so if we're if we're saying now, like yeah, today, yeah, I, I'm gonna say for me, I don't like just I don't do arguments anymore. Right, I, I don't like to. Maybe like in our younger days of the marriage, yeah, a little sure. bit more, I'd be a little more feisty. Yeah, but now I'm a little more blue. So I'm gonna pick. Do I have to tell you what I pick or no? No, you can tell me what you pick. All right, I'm gonna say. Rarely for All right. me. Um, you, for me. I'm going to say rarely too. Okay. But I mean, I won't say never because I don't know. Sometimes you do. Oh, really? You just made fun of me for sneezing. You know, <laughs> that I could have. That, that was funny. That's not making it funny. All yet. right. Next. That's just, it was funny. I mean, I could have stopped the whole podcast and redone it, but I was like, eh. Yeah. It's real life. All right. Number two. Life. Okay, go ahead. Do you like spending time with your partner? <laughs> yes. I want to see them every day. Yes, but not every day. Sometimes I also like my space. Never, I prefer to be alone. Okay, so, I mean, we see each other, I would say, you know, other than sleeping, <laughs> like 20 hours, <laughs> 19 hours. We see each other a lot. You know, do you want to be seeing me that much, though? I do want to see you every day. Okay, so I put number one, too. Me, too. too. <laughs> Did you do it out of fear? Of course. This whole, <laughs> this whole quiz I'm doing out of fear. Ah. All right. All right, you go. Do you spend time with your partner's oh, family? Gosh. <laughs> Okay. Oh, you know, that's a loaded question. Yeah. Well, your family lives in Buffalo. Yeah. So they're not here. Right. And my family, you know. Okay. Okay. So, yes, we see their family as much as they want to. Sometimes it's hard to make time for their family. Not very often. We see their family less and less. Not at all. We do not have time to see their family. I, uh, I mean, uh, honestly, we see their family as much as you want to. All and right. So I'm, would, that's so, how I feel. So you're doing choice two? Uh, one. Okay. So I'm going to put... You know, I, I, you, we know your family doesn't listen to the podcast. I don't know if my parents still listen. I'm going to pick three. Not very often. We see their family less and less. That is true. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Question four. You read it. You want to read it? All right. Yeah. Do you listen to your partner's feelings and concerns? <laughs> like all day. This, this is all I do. I mean, this is truly all okay. I do. Okay. I mean, yesterday... yesterday I, we well, were yesterday. there was three of you in a dressing room in Lulu Lemon, oh. whatever you call that store. Lulu Yeah, the, the kids had gift cards and 
you know, nobody can buy anything. I was out there. Daddy. I'm the I'm the one that has to be like you know get the they have to get the approval, and I'm there. Yeah, yeah, that's great, honey. You know, and then I look at the price tag; it's like seventy hundred dollars. Well, they have gift cards. Well, that's not a requirement of the family that yeah. they need approval. Okay, they, the children. I just want to clear that up. It's not yeah. like dad makes because no, I no. used to know people whose dad. Told no, them. like they just want they, they, they know just, they know I have a good eye. They care about what you think. Yeah, is really what. And it is. they know I you don't. Know. I have a real good eye. You're like, that's a terrible color. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, I'll tell them. I'm yeah, honest. You know, like right. if something doesn't look right, like, you know, I tell you. Yeah. Like, yeah. No. no, actually, you're great to go shopping. Yeah. With. And if something looks good, I'll be like, yep, that's the one. All right. So the, so the choices are, yes, their feelings and concerns are important to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I listen when they come up. Sometimes I don't ask, but sometimes they just talk about them. No, I don't have time to listen to their nonsense. Okay, so <laughs> num- I have to put yes. Number one. Okay. That's all I do. Yeah, That's me too. Pretty much, I listen to yours too. Uh, Not that you have a lot. No, no, not me. Okay. Are you often frustrated with your partner or your relationship? No, we rarely fight with one another. Yeah, we don't really fight. Sometimes we fight a couple times a month. Yes, I find myself angry with them regularly <laughs> all the time. Everything they do makes me mad. I feel like, no, you know what it is? I only, only when there's a good reason. Like when you had the ax out in the middle of the yard the other day and the kids run around barefoot. Yeah, I know. I've been doing so much yard work i know but that's like like i you know i just i was very frustrated i chopped up a tree i know i'm very proud of you yeah we're very very proud of you you get tired after you chop a tree i know but like the kids run around barefoot anyways all right so i would say i'm gonna say we let's say sometimes okay but although you took that well you were like i'm sorry yeah i just i just take it now (laughs) you're acting like I'm, gonna say, I'm victim blue. Okay, uh, you are a little bit. Lately. I'm victim blue. I'm gonna right. say no to that one. Right. We don't fight that much. Okay. We really don't, and we fight over stupid stuff. That's okay. True. All right. Do you engage in intimate moments with your partner? Ew. <laughs> Jumanji, Jumanji, Jumanji. <laughs> yes, I can't keep my hands off that. <laughs> yeah, we are intimate regularly. Oh. Occasionally, I tend to postpone the Jumanji time. <laughs> This is a kid show. This is a kid. Kids listen to the show. This is family friendly. This is family friendly. We don't say bad words. No, I would prefer to Jumanji by myself. No, I would prefer to (laughs) Jumanji by myself. Well, I'm going with one. Okay. A lot of Jumanji. That's for me. That's how I think. All right. I mean, I don't. You know, people right now are turning this off. A lot of people listen (laughs) in the bath and the shower. This could get disturbing (laughs) quite quickly for some people. Oh my god, I'm scared of the next question. All right, next one. Yeah, me too. Oh, okay. No, it's okay. Do you yell or raise your voice at your partner? Okay, very often I feel like I'm always yelling. Well, that, I mean, I'm only yelling if I'm, like, yelling, like, in a red rant. Not no, like you someone. don't yell. You're, you're, not, you're not a yeller. No, I often feel like I can't help it. Occasionally I try not to yell. Usually, never, I don't yell. I don't think yelling is a good motive. Yeah, so never for me. I, I, I don't, don't think I'm not I a do. Yeller. Do I yeah. yell at you? No, so, I mean, I think only sometimes we get, like, hyper on a topic. We get hyper on a topic. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Like, you were trying to tell, explain to me something about a system yesterday, and, like, you were, like, like yelling at me about it. Like I, I think, didn't understand the computer or whatever. Oh, no. I get louder when I'm trying to make somebody understand something. It's my, it is yeah. a problem I have. Yeah, but I, I didn't know what you were talking about. Yeah. I feel I like I just couldn't figure it out. But you said stop. And I'm like, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Do stop. you support your partner's dreams and goals? Yes. Their goals are as important as my own. Sometimes. But I think my goals are more important. Not really. I don't think their goals are interesting. Never. I only have time to focus on my goals and dreams. But we've merged our goals and dreams. Yeah. I, I mean, definitely yes. So, yes. That's a yes. I agree. Okay. Okay. And we don't have to agree on these answers, by the way. How often do you tell your partner that you love them? I, I For me, every day. So that's, I tell you every day. I feel like you tell me after I tell you, but okay. okay. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. You know, there's a lot going on in a day. All right. Do you build- <laughs> Last one. Last one, guys. <laughs> you, all right. Finally, we're done. Do you build your partner up with compliments or tear them down with insults? And I, I don't think I ever insult you. No, you don't. I constantly compliment my partner. That's what I say. Yeah, I give them a compliment every once in a while. I don't intend to, but sometimes they do get an earful of bad things. I don't find anything compliment worthy about them. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. <laughs> These quizzes are so silly. Um, you give something I call like the firester compliment, though. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, like I'll like be dressed up and you're like, um, wow, you look so tall. And it's like, is that good? Is that bad? Like... <laughs> Or, oh, that dress is black. Like, okay. But today you said my makeup looked good, which is very sweet. All right. I got your partner is extremely toxic. <laughs> you did not. Get away from them now. <laughs> you took it about yourself. Oh, I did? Oh, I mean, I got you are not toxic to your relationship. In fact, your relationship is strong as ever. So I got the best one. I got you are not toxic to your relationship. Same thing. I got the same thing. I don't know about this quiz, though. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm, I'm not, you know what? If you're not self-aware, you could totally pass that quiz. 
Yeah. Which might have been. Yeah, because you could you know which one to pick. Yeah. Like it's yeah. very like obvious. And if you're doing it with your partner, you might just <laughs> I think you're gonna take this by yourself later. Exactly. <laughs> all right. All right. Well anyway, we got all right, we got a couple couple ads. I think we're gonna even talk about a the most toxic friend group of all time, which is the Vanderpump nonsense. We're doing mm-hmm. that later. We got two ads and um here we go. Hey Scotty. Hey guys. Well, I think I know why I don't have so many friends. But after our new sponsor, I'm going to have a lot more. Well, yeah, Lumi is a whole body deodorant. Exactly. The first of its kind. And Lumi is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. You can use it there. I've been there. using it there. Yeah. And there? Oh, yeah. Definitely there. And under that? Under that <laughs> and over there. And in between there? Uh-huh. And also there. <laughs> a- after. <laughs> after there, you put it over under that? It's been everywhere. <laughs> It was created by an OBGYN <laughs> who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. It's clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor up for 72 hours. How? Well, unlike some deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. More like a pre-odorant. It's aluminum-free, baking soda-free, and paraben-free. It's pH balanced for safe use below the belt, you know, there. There. I just used it over there. I just saw you use it right now under there. (laughs) Choose from a variety of fresh, bright scents like clean tangerine, lavender sage, or toasted coconut. The Lumi starter pack, this is what you want. It's perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. And there's a special offer. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with code KYA at LumiDeodorant.com. Um, yeah, I love it because it really, to me, is a neutral smell. It smells like nothing and it doesn't irritate me. I have very sensitive skin all over my body and it doesn't bother me at all. So again, as a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code KYA at LumiDeodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit Lumi Deodorant and use code KYA. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. So we're having people over. I mean, what am I going to feed them? Uh, I'm... I say give them the leftovers because I don't want to give them my wild grain. The wild grain. That's a great idea no, to give not them. The, I, no, the wild grain's mine. It's my favorite. <laughs> They're going to get the leftover. But it's such a crowd pleaser. No, give them the mac and cheese. I want the sourdough bread. I want the fresh pasta, all the croissants, everything. But I want to make them some artisanal pastries, at least for dessert. You know, Wild Grain is the first ever bake from frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. (laughs) Unlike typical supermarket bread, Wild Grain uses a slow fermentation process that's easier on your belly, lower in sugar, and rich in nutrients and antioxidants. Every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less. You'll never run the risk of getting bored with Wild Grain. They're Constantly adding new seasonal and limited time special items to try. Plus, for every new member, Wild Grain donates six meals to the Greater Boston Food Bank so you can eat good and do good all at the same time. All you have to do is sign up at wildgrain.com slash KYA and choose which type of box you want to receive and how often. It's easy to reschedule, skip, or cancel. Plus, for a limited time, you can get $30 $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box. When you go to wildgrain.com slash KYA to start your subscription, you heard me, free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box. When you go to wildgrain.com slash KYA, that's wildgrain.com slash KYA, or you can use promo code KYA at checkout. Why does it feel so good to be toxic. I do so many readings and such a common thing are a lot of you are in or have been in or want to talk about some toxic relationships. And we're going to get to why all of a sudden you're starting to notice it or you want to get out of it. But first, why do we feel good in these toxic relationships? I mean, we've all been there. I would say for the most part, and I have myself too. And a lot of it is because we can start here of your empath aura. So 
your empath aura is purple, blue, turquoise, or indigos. And I see a lot of empath auras and the ones that lead with their empath auras. And also the ones who are unaware of the power and use and utilization of your empath aura are the ones that tend to get sucked in to these groups. And it's because you're usually an unaware empath. And on episode four of uh, this podcast, The Recovering Empath, I go into that, a big thing. But in short, an unaware empath is you don't understand what your empath powers are for. Being an empath means you feel the other people, other people's feelings the same as your own. And when you do that, what happens is, and you're not aware that you're doing it, you can take in their reality and substitute it for your own. You can jump over your own reality and commingle in other people's as a substitution. Also, also the other thing is when, when you have this ability, but you're unaware of how it's being used, is that it's not so important what people say to you. So I'm going to talk about all the ways that these groups are toxic, but what you'll notice is none of the things that I'm saying are ever explicitly said directly or written down, you know, not at all. But as an unaware empath, you know, these are the rules. You know, these are the requirements for being part of this friend group. And you know that because you pick up the unsaid. And when you're unaware that you're doing it, it feels just as real and as concrete as if people were saying it directly to you. So the wrong people in these toxic friend groups rely on everyone's ability to constantly live in a subconscious state and live in kind of like the unsaid, the read between the lines vibes all the time. So nobody actually has to be the bad person and actually say what they mean to say. They, un, they, they put it out there and make you pick it up so that they don't, because usually who's ruling these things are really, really like tougher individuals and they gather the rest of the group together in order to create this kind of energy of a toxic friendship. And they don't want to be the one, they don't want to say like, hey, I'm creating basically a group of sheepy followers that does everything that I don't have to say so I don't have to be the bad guy and backs up my reality and creates it for me. They don't want to say that, but unaware empaths, they do that. So it's, it's a perfect kind of situation. So like I said, in a lot of readings, I see these groups all the time and here are the, here's our, here are the pillars. Here are the pillars for one of these groups. And you're like, you'll, you'll notice none of these things are ever directly said, but you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So the first thing is, again, yeah, it's that head person. There's always a head person. They could have like a cohort head person too. And you're always afraid to upset them. Now, you know, they're the head person. You know that they're the ones that are like in charge in a rude way. Like, you know that that's them. And you're absolutely terrified of upsetting them. And it's an unsaid thing. You know, they never said like, I'm in charge. This is my group. I'm the leader. Like, they don't, like, that would be more normal. They're not saying that. They're just, um, they're just putting themselves in that position and everybody kind of, they're like the queen bee. They're not putting the Regina George name tag on themselves. Okay. Like you just know because you're an unaware empath and they're counting on you to just know. Also, the gossip is really good. There's such good gossip, but man, you are terrified that one day it's going to be about you because you've seen it be about the other people in the group and you've perhaps participated in it as well, because it's a fear thing. You don't want it to turn on you so you can get really focused on directing that energy towards other people in an attempt to make sure it almost like you create a moat around yourself. Like, don't talk about me. Let's talk about this person. You know, they said this and then they did this and then they do. Oh my gosh, did you see that? You know, and I heard this. Yeah. You know? So there's a fear that the, that, that gossip will get turned into you, onto you. Always high drama. But again, you're like terrified you'll be the next target. Sometimes it's like with another group or, you know, the head person has some sort of enemy, you know, and they'll, she'll flying monkey you out to all of them or whatever. Um, always drama though. Like it, it, you don't just sit around and talk about like the book you read yesterday. Okay. It's always like about somebody or something or some slight or whatever. That's what it's about. 
there's a feeling of uncertainty where you stand because there's no foundation or support in these groups. There is no place that you stand. You're only as good as your last action or deed or like what you say or whatever. Like everything can get taken away from you in this group in a second and you know it and they know it and that's how they keep you on your toes so that you keep honestly giving all your energy and all your attention and all your time to them all the time. So there's that uncertainty. Where do I stand? Like if you, if, if I do this and if I don't have money for this or if I don't show up to this or I don't say the right thing or I don't text the right way or whatever, this group's gone and I'm going to be the focus of gossip and drama. Oh my gosh, I can't do that. And all your energy. So that's, that's the tactic. A feeling of competition, but also a feeling that you're not allowed to win. So you're supposed to do good enough to like beat certain people or other outsiders, but you're not, or keep up the integrity of the group in a way, but you're not supposed to win against the head person, <laughs> maybe some other people in it. So again, it's that balance. Like, where do I stand? I, I can't do this too much. I can't talk about that. I can't talk about this because I am afraid that I'm going to make certain people feel unspecial. And my job is to actually be supporting role or whatever your job in that group is, which brings me to you have a role in the group and you'll never be able to change it. And, and they don't want you to like, so if you're the single quirky one with all the funny dating stories and all of a sudden like you fall in love and everyone's like, eh, like there's no place for you anymore. And you know that subconsciously. So you might even stay the quirky person that goes on dates and has all the bad dating stories. Like you might want to subconsciously stay in that area to appease the group. I mean, it's one of a million examples, but you're going to have a role in the group and you know, deep down, you can't change it. Otherwise there's no room for you in the group. And this group has built itself up to be the end all be all most important thing that there ever has been in the world is being part of this group. And if you're out of the group, you are not real. There's total criticism all the time. Hair, looks, choices, things you say. I mean, God forbid you're like the, the, the clown of the group because that's your role. So like everybody or the scapegoat of the group, you know, that's your role. Um, usually, or usually you find some sort of role and then they don't criticize you as much, but criticism is the way to keep you in it. So a lot of criticism and a lot of fear of the criticism, because you know, like the second you leave the dinner table, they're all talking about you or they're all group chatting about you. So why does it feel good? I mean, everything I just said sounds awful, right? Why does it feel good? <laughs> Why have we been stuck in these toxic friendships? Why do I read so many people that have this problem? And that's because of your programming um, and your empath aura and your unaware aura stuff. So reasons why it feels good. The first thing is it does feel like this is real and everything else is fake. That being in this group has built itself up so much. Everyone's giving so much of their total energy to this group. That leaving it, you've lost a part of your identity. You have to go find that on your own now. You've filled whatever void you have inside with the identity of the group. And even if it feels awful inside, it feels good. Because it's filling something that without, you got to go find it yourself. It's kind of like an addictive drug. Which these toxic groups and toxic situations can become just like a drug. They can be very addictive. And I read somewhere that a lot of it is our brains pay attention more to negativity than positivity, which makes sense if you think about it in survival terms. You probably do have to pay more attention to danger and things that are negative than things that are like positive or good or, or benign. And the brain likes to latch onto that stuff versus the other stuff, but your soul wants the more positive things. And we're going to talk about why you're noticing it in a second. But another reason why it feels good is you may be programmed to like this instead of non-drama friends. This could be very similar to your family situation growing up. This could be very similar to friend situations your whole life. This could just be because you have been such a, an unaware empath for so long, meaning you don't know the true gift that your empath abilities are and also what they're supposed to be used for, you get sucked into these empath traps, which can be these toxic friendship groups, meaning 
all your ability to feel other people's feelings as your own gets taken by a group where there's no benefit to it except a feeling of belonging. But they'll take all that energy. They'll take, oh, yep, 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 yep. We want all of your ability to do that. So they'll take it, which makes you feel needed or helpful or useful. But it's to no end. It's to no end. It's not like being a therapist or a teacher or volunteer or, or anything else where like where you put that ability to feel other people's feelings as your own and then put it to good, good use. It's not like that. It hits, but it hits different based on your programming. If that's something that it's just you're good at it, you know, what do I always say? We don't do it good for us. We do what's normal for us. And so that's just something that can show up in these, in these patterned ways. You know, and, and also you're, you're just good at it. You know, like you're good at being in these toxic groups. Like you're good. You know exactly when the winds of change are coming, the tides shift in, like, you know, all that and you know, okay, they're about to turn on me. I better make so-and-so a target or, oh, their drama's happening. I better get under it so that it's not about me. Okay. Um, I better be invisible because head person's having an insecure day today. So I better make sure that I'm extra sweet and kiss her butt more than I usually do. Like you're just good at it because possibly you were trained to be good at it. So why we like to do things that make us feel successful. Um, and you know, you're just good at the rules. And another reason why it can feel good is it's a huge distraction from probably what you should be doing, but you don't want to or feel capable of or you're feeling too insecure to do or whatever like the example with the with the single person in the group like you're the single person in the group we support you not change not changing at all and staying exactly the same we support you not having evolution oh great because like i don't want to i don't want to go out there and deal with all the stuff i have to deal with in order to find like a relationship that's healthy so this is perfect they they allow me to stay in my toxic patterns and now i don't have to change okay like it's very subconscious and and it's really hard because like when you're in these, and I've been there, when you're in these toxic groups to get out, you have to look at yourself like, how is it feeding me? How is it feeding me? When you can answer, why does this make me feel good? And, and, and you actually get the answer, which I'm telling you right now, isn't going to be a pretty one. <laughs> it's going to be like, whoa, that's horrible. <laughs> and you can deal with like the backlash of your own, like, it's like a, fireworks in your head like whoa like that I was doing that because of that that's all oh my god and you make the connections I'll tell you what's gonna happen is you're done you're done with them then you're done then you might you know only want cats and dogs as friends for a while but it's okay that's a start I talk about that in the recovering empath too it's called isolated empath you're like okay wait a second I have to be isolated for a while it's it's all part of the staging um yeah and 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 again, sometimes toxicity gets really replaced with the feeling of love. Like for you growing up or in your life or with formative relationships that you've had, toxicity may have felt like love. Like your first love in life may have been extremely toxic. And there's just something there that that you feel like there's something inside you need to crack open or there's something you're still chasing or something you're still trying to figure out. So you might have associated a toxic feeling with what love feels like and put them together. Even though they're unrelated, you may have associated it together energetically. And finally, uh, sometimes it's like just family issues. You know, I see a lot of people that had problems with their mom growing up find a lot of toxic female friendships moving forward. Or, or even if like you and your mom's relationship is like amazing, Sometimes I can see you working it in a different way. Like you, you end up being kind of like a caretaker for people or something. Um, a care to, you know, cause, and, and they'll, they'll lean on you. Like you're the one that the head person would never attack. Like you're actually their best friend. Like you're the person that they love the most. So it's just, you kind of got to look at how your family relationships worked, especially with if it's a, listen, I, I talk a lot, most of you are female. So talking about a lot of female relationships, like what are my, what are my formative female relationships like? And what are my friend group female relationships like? Because, you know, you'll find a link. And the, the next question is, is like, am I toxic or are they, you know? And the thing is, is everyone's toxic. Like when you are an empath, so when you enter, 
a situation that's toxic in or if you have if you stay there long enough you're going to be toxic too and that's the other thing when you're backing out of these situations you have to forgive yourself because there's going to be a lot of like oh my gosh i don't want to face what i did so i'll just stay in it instead it's kind of like <laughs> when you jumped in the pool and you got used to it and it's really, it was really cold getting it, but now you're used to it. But you know, at some point you got to get out of that pool and it's going to be really freaking cold, you know, you, but you got to bite the bullet. And that's the same thing with this. Like you got to bite the bullet. Like when you run out of that relationship, it's not going to feel good, but you have to forgive yourself and you have to use it as lessons and, and move forward. Um, because being in these toxic situations, it, yeah, you're toxic too. And toxic energy is finding you. And, you know, toxic energy in the body can manifest in so many ways. You can feel anxious and restless. You're not working on your evolution. You're just, it's, you're in like a survival mode. So it's really hard to spiritually grow or connect with yourself because you're always outside yourself connecting with this group instead of yourself. Like your thoughts are always thinking about them instead of like what maybe was more formative for you or helpful. And it can turn into like a restlessness, a sleeplessness, health issues, I mean, you, you can just, there's so many different things. But the worst thing I think is it turns into a stagnancy. You're stagnant. You're just stagnant. Um, yeah, and, and if you're noticing this, so let's say like, okay, I'm noticing this. All this sounds familiar. I've wanted to get out of this group, but it, it's so hard to find friends that aren't like this. Or when I do find people that are like this, it's hard for me to feel like I connect to them because toxicity for me feels like connection, even though it's not, it can feel like that because you're just associated the two. What happens is, is I want you to just give yourself a big hug because you're ready to get out of it. So if you're noticing these things all the time, all of a sudden, and you're like, oh my God, and, but this group has been part of your life or this pattern has been part of your life for a long time, you know, pat yourself on the back because you've just leveled up and nobody around you has changed. You've changed. You're just noticing things now that in the past you didn't. So I want you to like give yourself a big old hug because honestly, that's the first step feeling like, what the heck, man? This isn't cool. Like, there you go. That's your first step. Um, so we don't just step into these things you know, but all of a sudden, especially when you've been working on yourself, they appear to you like, and you're, and you're like, oh my gosh. And so it's, so it's not something that happened overnight. Like this is a patterned behavior probably has been following you your whole life and getting out of it and breaking out of it is really tough. And this is my pep talk for you because it, it is really hard to find friends who aren't toxic and feel connected to them. But I am telling you, <laughs> the more you work on yourself, the more you recognize what fed you about these toxic patterns and these toxic relationships and why they made you feel alive and why they made you feel connected and why they made you feel loved and why they, why they were fun to you, why they were entertaining to you. The more you look into that, the, the more you'll break, you'll break those connections. And you'll demystify them. And all of a sudden, it's not fun anymore. It just makes you feel low vibe. It makes you feel sick. It makes you feel the opposite of what it ever used to make you feel. It makes you feel kind of dirty. And the other people that can come through, because the second you start doing this, the universe will send you different situations, opportunities, people, and relationships. Those people, all of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm seeing all this for the first time you're the connection that's real you're the evolution these are people that support me and love me and want me to change and evolve and root for me and all of a sudden it's not boring anymore it is a beautiful life-altering adventure of security and love and connection and i tell you right now what it's kind of like like when you give up um this is like a terrible analogy, but here I go. It's kind of like when you give up salt or, you know, which I've been doing. I've been trying to like, I've been trying to step away from salt. And it's so funny because then I went to this well-known restaurant and I had like their chicken noodle soup 
it's like a chain restaurant. You've eaten there too. And I had their chicken noodle soup and I'm like, ah, oh. and I had it all the time, like forever ago. I always have it. And it, but I haven't had like, so I've been really being good about my sodium intake for like a month now. Um, and I had it. I'm like, oh, like it was like, literally, did you make salt water and put noodles in it? It's disgusting. Okay. That is that feeling <laughs> is what's going to happen when you start hanging around more soul connected people. And then all of a sudden you meet up with somebody who is more like your ego connected, toxic person. You're like, Oh God, I did that. Like it's not hitting anything on me. So I promise you there is hope. There is hope. We have a new partner, Jenny Kane, and let me tell you what, what happened, no joke, the first day I wore this, my new favorite piece of clothing, which is the cashmere cocoon cardigan. Okay, so I put it on immediately. I got it in the mail. I'm like, oh my God, this is so flipping gorgeous. And I put it on over what I was wearing, and then I just go out to get my mail. And my neighbor, no lie, stopped me in the street. She's like, where did you get that sweater? And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so crazy. I just got it and put it on. It's Jenny Kane. And I love it so much. I've already worn it three days in a row, like three different looks. So it's beautiful just around the house and it's gorgeous. I dressed it up with with like a nice jean and like a nice top and I went out with it. And I also went out to um, dinner wearing it. So it it dresses up, it dresses down. It's just every day luxury. And I already know that I want the everyday sweater next because I feel like one piece is just not going to be enough. It just fits my vibe so essentially perfect that I can't get enough of her stuff. Jenny Kane believes in one thing. It's the art of simplicity with a focus on comfort, quality, and timeless design. Jenny Kane makes pieces that truly never go out of style. I mean, this is a staple. This is a staple and every single one of her items is a staple and it's an investment in my wardrobe and it just makes me feel happy. So find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. And guess what? Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code KYA at checkout. That's KYA off your first order. Jenny Kane, J E N N I K A Y N E dot com. Promo code KYA, the brand go to for all season staples. Treat yourself because you deserve it. Know Your Aura podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. And I was thinking about a time I learned something about myself. I learned that I overthink and my thoughts run away from me. And I can feel very out of control when that happens. And understanding that through therapy, that that can be something that is separate from me and something that I can work through and something that I can learn, you know, to, to live with and I can learn to deal with better. That really did change my life because I felt more in control and less upset when it would happen. Getting to know yourself, you know, it can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and we're always changing. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on the journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. I've truly benefited from therapy in my life, especially with dealing with my thoughts that run away from me. And, um, you know, it's just helpful learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. And it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. This helps Anybody, at any time, anywhere. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash KYA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash K-Y-A. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. Okay, so talking about toxic friend groups this week, you know this has to be big. 
big, big, big news if it hit Scotty's ears. Yes. I mean, I go to my Instagram. Yes. And I see this guy. I think his name is Tom. Sandoval. Sandoval. I wasn't sure if he was a member of the Village People. <laughs> I didn't know if this guy was in a Village People cover band. If you don't know who the Village People were, look it up. He looks exactly like the cowboy guy. He also looks like the construction worker, too. He looks like too. any of them, really? Almost any yeah. of them. Yeah, almost any almost. of them. Like three out of the five. I think there were five. <laughs> but I'm like, why is this guy coming up on my feed? Yeah. And apparently the Vanderpump Rules mm-hmm. is back in the news. Yeah. I had personally, to be honest with you, I thought the show was canceled like three years ago. I hadn't heard a word about it. Yeah. You know, I, I know we worked with a couple of them. You yes. know, pr- yeah. prior, like Stasi. Yeah. And uh Shana. Shana. Okay, show. so I so mm-hmm. I knew that. But then I thought like the show ended. I thought like the Jackson it was, guy They were very much out of the news. Okay, but apparently they're back. Or and never I, left. I don't know. I don't watch the show. The last time I actually watched it was in preparation to be on the um a sexy unique podcast uh back in 2018 and i like caught up on it a bunch just to like know what was going on or it was like around season seven at the time right. but so it's been like five and four so or five I haven't years watched, right? i haven't thought or watched it or anything since then but this is so huge and people are really like out of their minds about it you know and and it's it's interesting and you, you can't escape it so a lot of people are like you know what talk about their aura colors All right. and i'm like Okay, and honestly, this is what you're getting here. You can hear gossip in a more, I guess, like detailed and fact-checking way somewhere else. I'm just giving you what you're going to get in color. What color. you're getting in aura color. I don't know the detail for detail drama that's going on, but honestly, just like when I like reading people, I don't like knowing things. So I took a, I took the offending people's photos, the most recent ones okay. I had, <laughs> okay. and it's like let's see what's going on and. um so I have them, but like I should fill you in real quick on what even happened. All right, tell, like, tell me. I mean, I'm sure like, I'm sure our listeners probably already know. Yeah, this is Cliff Notes stuff. But if you don't, okay, it's just like toxic crap. So everyone's okay. friends. Okay. All right. And they sh- all probably play Jumanji together. I'm, I'm already I'm already they, guessing here. I think they do. And there's two guys named San- uh, Tom. So I'm just gonna call the one Sandoval and the one Schwartz. Right. I remember this. You know, this is. My memory is jogging from years ago when we did some of these Vanderpump segments. Yeah. And there's the Tom Toms, right? The Tommy yeah, Toms or so, something. So all you have to know is Tom Sandoval is in this relationship long time where they live together. They they honestly they have a marital vibe. Like okay. they've lived and been together so with Ariana. And then there's this other couple in the friend group, James Kennedy, and his they were engaged, Raquel. I'm going to say her name wrong, like Levis or something. I'm probably going to say it, but Raquel. Right. And, <laughs> but they, I, I, and this is where a detailed person would understand this more. They broke up, James and Raquel, but I think, um, anyways, okay. Raquel and Tom have been, got it, for like okay. at least seven months in like a supercharged, like full on cheating relationship. Okay. And like with real pettiness too. Like she was, seems like she was like going to his things and it was really secret and they loved the secret part of it. They were wearing like necklaces to show each other in public, how they like secret liked each other and stuff like that. And everyone feels of course, really bad admittedly for Ariana. Cause that's, you know, she thought they were friends. Sure. You know, like she would come over and she'd go take a nap and like her and her longtime boyfriend who she lived with were, jumanji together right. okay. and so it's just it was like it was just terrible so tom, tom so the whole thing's awful village person tom and yeah. raquel are jumanji together yeah behind that's all you have to know ariana's back yeah okay, it's got like it. okay. yeah it's like it's like and people, you're in a relationship and the your person you're in a relationship okay. with is with your best friend and behind for some your reason back. people care about this people was, care because it's all being like i think filmed right now like okay. in real time so yeah. All right, well, let's give give me give me the colors. All right, All right so are we doing? listen, I'm going to start with Raquel, okay. okay? Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to start with Ariana because Ariana, and I've looked at her through, like, several pictures through many, many years of her being out. She used to be more, like, she's yellow-purple, but, but she's had so much pink come out um, in her life. So I feel like she was probably a pink or a kid. And then what happened is, is in this, I see this with a lot of uh, yellow, purple, or, you know, people that turn purple or whatever. They were pink as a kid, you know. So anyway, so she has more pink in her aura now than she ever has. And so I'm looking at like a recent picture of her before this came to light, but it, he was probably, but at the time he was cheating on her. That's a, a picture I'm looking at and they're together. And when I look at Ariana, she's got a lot of pink around her. 
There's yellow purple in there too because those are like her colors, but like the pink is really strong. And it's great that she's been tapping back into that. And she feels like a really genuine person and she feels very sweet and everybody feels this about her. That's why everybody's so protective and upset. And I think that's why it does pull on heartstrings even to people who don't watch the Vanderpump Rules universe or whatever like because there's just something about her like you she she feels like a kid you just want to protect her the the thing with the pink though it's so bubbly around her it's so big she's doing that thing i'll see pink auras do is that you know something's off but you're refusing to deal with it now when i was filming uh with real houses of miami lisa hot she and she had that same pink on her and i told her it didn't make to the cut but i told her at the time i'm like you're so pink like you know what's going on but you're not you're not willing to deal with it right now so i feel like ariana somewhere in her understood but she's protecting herself okay. and that's just something pink or people do they go into i call it they go into their joy bubble and they can really disassociate from reality because they don't want to know and they don't want and they can be easier to hide things from because people are like didn't you notice didn't you did it it's like it's it's how do I explain? It's kind of like a kid, a kid's ability to ignore things or not want to believe something they don't want to believe. Kids do that all the time. Okay. So I feel like she's in that place. Okay. So ba- basically, you're what you're saying is Ariana knew probably knew something was going on it's with deep, 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 deep with down village person Tom. And yeah. The other deep down girl. Yeah. Okay. And it's probably she, because she didn't get a chance to really understand her pink aura growing up that as she's reclaimed it, you can go through stages of development in your aura as it kind of like forms around you again. Does that make sense? Yeah. You have to get used to it. You got to learn to, but one of the things you got to learn is you can't step away from reality so long as to not notice things. Right. But she didn't notice it. So this is a bombshell to her. Like she has no flipping idea. Okay. And, um, and, but she feels like she's always been taking care of him. That's the other thing. Like, I feel like she's always been like motherly to him, taking care of him, um, holding foundation for him, making him feel supported and better. Cause when I look at Tom Sandoval, he's purple and blue, but he's really insecure about it. All right. And I do see this often with some, I do see this often sometimes with purple blue men, if they haven't been trained, which it's really hard because society won't, that your purple blue aura isn't something to be like ashamed of. Meaning your emotional and creative self doesn't mean you're less of a man or something. And, and people do constantly think he's gay. That's the other thing. He does get that a lot. And it's funny. You just call them the village people. <laughs> He gets that. But yeah. no, no, honestly, like, he gets that a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, people are like, I thought he was gay. Like, you'll see that in the gossip well, I, all I, the time. I thought he was, yeah. Yeah, and it, fine. Yeah. It's just, it, he just kind of, and I, with the way I see it is he, you know, everything's fluid on people, you know? And when you're purple-blue, it's easier to be kind of like, oh, fluid about things. If you're not trained and, and understand and being self-aware about you know, what's responsible and what's not responsible. So I'm not giving him like, I just feel like he's insecure. Yeah. Not self-aware has believed the hype. Like he really takes in and absorbs the hype of him. Like, I feel like a lot of this hype got to his head. Yeah. Like I'm a restaurant owner, my wife, you know, Ariana. I feel like it's been a lot of time pumping him up, making him feel like he's worthy and deserving of this. And he went like overboard on it to this point where it's like, and I also feel like this goes into Raquel. Are you following this? Yeah, I, okay. no, I, I'm getting it. Okay. Raquel. Now, this will make sense. Yeah. Two like energies found each other here okay. because Raquel has no idea who the heck she is. She is the most floaty. It's funny because like when I back in 2018, I called her like a feather. Like okay. she just flo- like, what is this? Like her energy just like exists. What what are her colors? She's so light blue. Light blue? Like, I feel like she has no idea who the heck she is. She really does. Like, she, and she's putting herself in these situations and inserting herself. It's like, who do you need me to be? What do you need to be? How do I? And she's dependent on other people's explanations of who she is for her own identity. And I get that that relationship between her and Sandoval fed that in each other okay. in a lot of ways. So it's like two like blues it's merging. It's two of these like insecure these... who am I identity issue people finding okay. each other 
because they get it in each other. Like Ariana knows who in a lot, Ariana knows who she is, you know, like she's, we all evolve and deal with things. And I feel like she's, she knows who, I feel like she's a little quieter. I feel like she wants a home. I feel like she's in this world, but she can also separate herself from it. Uh, these, these two need it, like need it really bad. And, and they feed that off of each other yeah, or whatever. So, and what's her other, does she have another color? Honestly, she's like, right now she's more purple, Okay, but like, it's so, I feel like it's an absorbed, she's trying to be something, right? I feel like she's trying to be something and I watch her and I don't even know what this means. I just, this feels like the type of person she is picking up a bunch of different narratives as this goes on. Like I'm a victim or I'm in love with him or no, he used me or I'm just, you know, like, like, like which one fits, which one do most people agree with? And then that's the storyline I'll go with. Okay. Because I think she was also trying to get with that Tom Schwartz or something because the the, other Tom, the other Tom, Tom, yeah, the other Tom, Tom, he's, he's, yeah, what's his color? He's, um, so he's green and blue. Okay. He's very green. So when I look at him, he's just kind of like, and I don't, like I said, I don't watch the show, but he just feels like he, how do I put this? Um, I bet he, I think he was covering because he does feel like the type that would know everything, but be like, let's just not bring it up or yeah. let's here, like I'll here, you guys, you are a mess. Like you're purple blue. You're like floaty feathery blue. Uh, you two are crazy. I see what's going on here. This is a mess. Also, I'm green, so I don't want our business to go down uh, because everyone's going to hate you. And then this is like a mess. So let me just move the storyline where Raquel and I are having a flirtation that keeps her in the bubble of relevancy for you both, but doesn't like blow up our life or whatever. Okay. And, and is he- I feel like he was trying to help organize like wingman style. Okay. A little bit because he's is, more systematic. And this is where I get lost a little bit. All right. I might too. Tom Tom, green, green Tom Tom mm-hmm. is. Schwartz. But is he married or anything? Is he, he just got divorced from. Jax? No, no like. <laughs> what happened? To- <laughs> that, don't even worry about that. Okay, he just, he's out. Yeah, the, the, we can't deal with that. Did, um, He got divorced from Katie, okay. I think. Okay, I don't know that one. Yeah. Was that one on the show? She yeah, was, she she was, yeah. But I, again, I don't watch it, so okay. And and Jax is the one I used to always. I you know it was a few episodes. I've been early episodes. I made fun of him. He's out of the picture. Yeah, he's not part. But now they're all are coming in and oh, chiming they're, they're, in. Okay, so can I? Okay, they're all just, chiming in. So this is like yes. You have more ahead. on your aura take? No, no, that's basically it. All right. <laughs> now so, I, have I to feel give, so gross. Yeah, I. This is so toxic. I do. I, I feel gross talking about it. Yeah, I feel gross listening to it, and <laughs> I need. Lumi, give Loomy. me. I need you. Lumi, get the Lumi. Get it back on. Put there and there and, and be- over there. And between that. And between that. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give my logical take on okay. this. Okay. Now, I know everyone comes to listen to hear your aura take. I'll give the red aura and take. Now, but this is the red aura red take. Red aura okay? take. I think this is all nonsense. <laughs> I think that, okay. I didn't even know the show was on for three to five years. Right. Last, I think, you know, I, I don't even remember what the last time I heard about these people mm-hmm. then all of a sudden this shows up in my facebook and my instagram yeah. and my huge influencer tiktok account right and i think it's all staged i think yeah. this is all set up yeah. i think that they all did this to get and they're all in on it they all know about it they they did this to get back in the news like how old are these people like, they're like old i'm red red to hear i mean <laughs> they're like too old to I'm be like, acting this i way. don't know how, i want to say late 30s maybe early 40s y- okay yeah i mean one guy's running around he looks like a guy in the village people <laughs> and he's cheating on another person in the friend group and he's mar- almost mar- married almost married to the other one yeah the other guy is divorcing this one this one's yeah. with that one then with that one yeah there's isn't there a lala person involved in this nonsense yeah I she's guess. just lala whatever yeah doing her lala thing right right I, the only one maybe jack one of them punched the only- one of them punched raquel Shayna punched raquel oh, okay so yeah there's like physical stuff I mean, there's courts involved now hearings I mean, the only one I haven't heard of is maybe Jax, Jackson, whatever he, that guy's name. No, he had something to say. I don't know. Like, I can't follow it, but you're right. Yes. I think this was, you know, Bravo, this is a Bravo show, right? Oh, yeah. Bravo loves this kind of thing. Yeah. You know, they put people that are going to jail on their shows. Yeah. They cast jail. You know, that lady that went to jail, whatever. She was cast because she was probably going to jail. Yeah. I think the same thing. I think the Bravo producers put them up to this stuff and said, hey, look, you go with this one. You go with that one. Right. 
what does it really matter in the end? You're all toxic, incestuous, doing this all together. And this is going to get ratings. And it did. That's my red aura take on it. I, I think like it's an unset. Just like, okay, what I think is that I just got over talking about that in my uh, talk, how empath auras, when they're unaware, know kind of what to do and what's expected of them, even if it's toxic. And I feel like it's more that. Yeah. I don't feel like any producers are like explicitly go do that. Da, 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 da. No, but maybe I feel maybe, like they know what the expectation is. Right. But maybe they those know. producers push them in that direction. I think they understand what the expectation is yeah. to stay. You want to stay relevant? Like, right. okay, we need something here. Yeah. You know, like that. And they're, they might not even know that they're doing these toxic things like to stay relevant. Like that that's a motivating factor for them. That's what I'm like, saying. Like cheating on your long-term, like, t- like Sandoval cheating on his long-term girlfriend mm-hmm. with this fluffy feather girl yeah what is that feather aura lady like they don't even feel like they have a connection to me honestly like right. i don't feel any chemistry between them between at least between sandoval and ariana i get some sort of like they've shared stuff like they've broken down together and built themselves up together like they have it's actually really sad because yeah. i don't think she was she wasn't faking it okay no maybe not you know maybe and not. so i feel really bad like that feels real to me even though it feels like really broken and messed up it does at least feels like real and solid and this other chick coming in i feel like it's like i am so it's like sandoval's like i'm so insecure this is super subconscious like i'm so insecure with who i am i need something to keep me up like i need something no ma- negative or positive i just need something yeah and and that's what when and enter oh, you need me <laughs> Oh, I'm the fluffy feather ball girl who's going to do whatever, you know, like that, because that's her energy. So, um, so that's what I think it's just reading between the lines and acting yeah. accordingly. And that's what is the danger when you don't know yourself. But listen, it's going to keep them on the air. Yeah. Their accounts they, are all going to grow. Right. They're going to get an, renewed for another season. So then that Sandoval yeah. put out, which I think was a total, I don't even know what's going on, but I feel like it's a total <laughs> Schwartz. What? The other, okay, so you know he's part of this restaurant called Tom Tom, right? The Tommy, yeah, yeah. Tom Toms, and and they're only like they each have like a five percent stake, you know. It's they're basically just sure. the head, sure. You know, they're the whatever, right? But how, what's this gonna? I'm, I'm boycotting Tom Tom. I'm not going there anymore, right? Right. So I think his green blue little associate, Mister Schwartz, sure, made him put this out. He's like, you better go do this. Like an apology or something. He put out an apology, but the apology was so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it was man. something like, listen, <laughs> I realize you're mad, but don't take it out on my business associates. So there's people that work there and blah, 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 blah. So it, wasn't, it was more like, hey, guys, I know you're mad, but don't lose me money. Right. Okay, like that. And then he keeps liking all of um, that Raquel's posts and stuff. Okay. It's, and just, the, it's, all, it's like, come on. Like, nobody is, learned anything. This is so nobody toxic. Nobody learned anything. This is <laughs> so toxic. I, I can't handle this. This is for my, you know, we are supposed to be, what is it, 5D, enlightened know, beings. Know. You know, the people that listen to our podcast, we're all 5Ders now. <laughs> this is like the 3D grossness. I know. We're like it's, too zen for this, you guys. Yeah. We're, yes. Everyone who listens to this podcast is too zen <laughs> for this. We have to, we have to just not care. But it's important to know what's going on. Yeah, but we have to know why? what's going on. It's just this, this is like a bubble know. in West Hollywood. I know. It's a little tiny bubble no, in know. West Hollywood going there, where so. it takes 45 minutes to travel one mile. <laughs> and they got time. They got time to do this nonsense. <laughs> they just stay in one okay? spot. You, it, re- it truly takes 45 minutes to travel one mile in West Hollywood. That is true. And they're probably angry about that. <laughs> so they, they do these things. And yeah. This is just, to me, this is just like total nonsense. Where do we go from here, Scott? There's nowhere to go from here. Yeah, I'm right. just, uh, you know, and the Oscars are coming up. Oh, no, the Oscars are tonight. Th- this is just too toxic. I know. Yeah, this is too toxic. Um, oh, my God. We have to detox. We've got to get you out in nature. Yeah. This- let's talk about some high vibe stuff. All right. Let's talk about some high vibe We need stuff. some good music. Okay. I had the Jupiter Donut. That got me in a You got us donuts. That was great. Yeah. Um, We need some, How do some we- nature. Nature. Okay. Yeah. I think we need, like, my spiritual trap music. Okay. A lot of people have been asking, what is spiritual trap music? Well, you know what it is. What is it, Scott? Spiritual trap music. <laughs> Is this our, are we going over, are we going overtime here? Is this overtime? No, no, we can keep it. No, okay, okay, still time. I'm just means... trying to like end it on a positive note. Okay, so if you're still here, it's it's on us, not on you. No, it's not this overtime. is on us. Yeah, it's, it's not fine. overtime yet. Okay, spiritual. Okay, so spiritual track music is when I come in to the room <laughs> and you're like, I ch-, you're just like, I don't chase, I attract, I don't chase, I attract. I guess I think it's music. That is supposed to 
uplift you spiritually. Yeah, like and talk I about guess, manifestation. I discovered this. I made a playlist. I'm on. Uh, you can find it easy on Spotify. You just put in spiritual trap. But like, I did make a playlist on the Mystic Michaela on Spotify. I am not like what do they call it like verified or anything on there you just have to find me and believe it's me but anyways um spirit trap music is talking rap so then spiritual trap is spiritual talking rap so they're like i don't chase i attract (laughs) everything i want falls right into my lap it's like the best mantras but like spoken to to, to like musical bat like a a beat. beat yeah and um it's great yeah, I don't listen to it. It's great. The kids, but the kids, everybody makes fun of me, but y'all like it. it yeah. Y'all like we it. All do, yeah. I do. I love it. So, so we're going to do that. Okay. So we're listening to some spiritual trap music. <laughs> we're getting in nature. Right. We had a Jupiter donut. That's probably bad because of the sugar. So that could be. I don't know. Sometimes you need sometimes it. Sometimes you, you know? need it. Yeah, sometimes, for this you need it. Sometimes you need it. Maybe we delete TikTok from our phones. That would be good. Okay. I'm going to delete TikTok from my phone. Yeah. I'm going to delete my Instagram account. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm yep. going to go dark. I'm going to go dark. Okay. I mean, I'm, I've been such an influencer for so long. You need a break. I need a break. Like you a... know, it's hard being an influencer. It's hard to show people your vacations and tell them, you know, stay tuned. <laughs> and oh, you're going you know, on an influencer red rant now? Yeah. It's like, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to tell people to stay tuned. And then like they stay tuned. Maybe. I hope not. I really hope they don't. But maybe they do. And then it's like pictures of your vacation it's like, to, wow, to Greece or something. Thanks. It's like, wow. So glad I stayed tuned like, for that. that. Does anything. I'm still here. What does that do for My me? House. What are you doing for me? <laughs> like, wow. Well, yeah. So Listen, at least we got Lumi. We got Lumi. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of Jumanji. So if, if you are <laughs> with a significant other, you know, if you were on a first date, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you were on like a, maybe a fifth date, what's, a, what's an appropriate amount of time these days? I don't know. It's I been so five long. Days. Five dates. Yeah. Okay. So if you're on a fifth date, fifth or sixth, four yeah. maybe. You can talk about Jumanji this much. and Yeah. This episode's for you. Yeah. You know, because you could one, figure out the toxic part. Yeah. And then two, you're playing Jumanji. Yeah. And there were so many in here today that, yeah, a lot you know, of that, Jumanji. Yeah. No, none of the guys are going to be mad at me. Anyone's going to be mad at me because I've gotten some <laughs> notes, my DMs. That's why I got rid of Instagram that said, you know. Say it more. All right. So, on anyways, that, on that note, this podcast is for you and about you, and we're so glad you spent some time with us today. 